Everything is dull and gray and falling off Everything is turning to ash in my hand And now dirt is poison where I stand And all that's good I will tear apart Don't you want to be there by my side don't you want to witness when my head rolls? Don't you want to be there by my side? Don't you want to be there when I shed this skin? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Fuck, man, we got checks! We're gonna fuck them doggy style and shit on their parents' beds! <laughs> I'm working my chest, I'm working my triceps, I'm working the back of my calves, and I'm working my heart, and I'm working my lungs. I'm working my buttocks. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Ski King, why don't you just take your mama home some chicken, and then I won't have to stuff my boot all up in your ass. Man, you are one crazy motherfucker. But it's hard. Go home to your mother. Doesn't she ever want you? Tell her this isn't some communist Greetings, fellow Earthlings. Welcome to the Film Attorneys Podcast, where, well, the first officially named Film Attorneys Podcast. Uh, I was going to call it Yakking Off and talk about other things besides movies, because I feel like maybe that's getting a little old, but then I just ended up kind of picking apart movie reviews and, again, in more of a long-form kind of thing. I was like, hey, you know what, that's my thing. I might get back to doing that. I was going to shit on people's Yelp reviews, but Jim Florentine beat me to that one. So, I guess I'm just stuck doing movies. But, ironically, the first officially named Film Attorney podcast is not really going to have much to do with movies. Although, I'm sure I'll be using plenty as an example. Today, we're talking about aliens. And the declassification of said knowledge of aliens. Or... More accurately, UFOs. So, what are these goddamn things, exactly? I know the government is not done pretending to release footage yet. Now, I gotta say, I've been a believer in aliens and UFOs and all that pretty much all my life. With a healthy amount of skepticism. Whenever, you know, I see footage like the, uh, the alien interrogation, and then you see uh, Rick Baker, the special effects guy that did, you know, American Werewolf in London, with the, the whole werewolf transformation, still the best one ever put on film. It watches it and starts pointing out the, the flaws and how it's a puppet and all that. Now, granted, Rick Baker's not an expert in, you know, extraterrestrial anatomy, but he is an expert in puppets. So, and you do need a puppet if you're going to pull that off, uh, that particular hoax. So you kind of have to lend a little credence. And the part of you that's disappointed that it is a hoax is also a little bit relieved. It, there is a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it, comfort in finding out that it's bullshit. Same with like Skinwalker Ranch. I Conceptually, I love it. The weird orbs, the giant wolf, and all the weird shit, but it just... Produce some proof. No one can ever produce proof of these things. Even when, in like the case of Skinwalker Ranch, I think they spent like two years studying the events there, and they're just like, uh, we haven't found anything. Uh, we don't really know. So so far, we cannot get, we can't set up cameras and catch the weird orbs doing things. But the story is great. Another one of my favorites is Mothman. Uh, the Mothman Prophecies movie was, I, for, the movie was, it's way it's watchable, but if you know the story behind Mothman, you know that movie did not do even a third of what it could have did with that story. I mean, that, that could have been such a goddamn good and creepy movie, but they just made that other horse shit, but 
the thing that gets really fascinating about Mothman is that uh, that's where the, I don't know if it's where it originated, but it, it's one of the stories where the men in black show up. Uh, one of which is so fascinating, I actually ad adapted the scene into, into the novel I'm writing, which, uh, it, it's, what I, what I wrote in it is similar, but the real story behind it was this, uh, local newspaper writer was, uh, had a guy come into her office who was really weird and he spoke with this unidentifiable accent and he picked up her pen and he was just weirdly fascinated with this pen and he just looked at it like he'd never seen a ballpoint pen before and then he just starts laughing maniacally and walks out of the office so I, I wrote a version of that in the end of my book except in my version he downs a coke in one setting, belches, and then leaves the room awkwardly. And then he dies around the corner because his body's not able to handle it. The the Coca-Cola eats through his stomach. But anyway, uh, I, I that's my favorite story from The Mothman, and it's just so weird and creepy. Of course, didn't make the movie because it would have been good. But the um, that's a great story, but I would... I really would love to visit that town, but I hate the idea of like showing up at that town just to look at the statue and start asking questions about Mothman, and they're like, "Oh God, it's another one of these assholes." There is no Mothman; he doesn't exist. It was all bullshit, bullshit story to sell that stupid movie with Richard Gere. It would be a letdown at the same time, a bit of a relief, knowing that it didn't really happen. So it's a weird. Uh, I'm, I'm weirdly conflicted. And now that they're declassified, I strangely believe in aliens a lot less than I did before. Because I feel like we should be getting better footage than... I mean, I've seen all this before. And I've become weirdly skeptical of them. But uh, the more I've thought about it, the more I've thought about it in terms of, okay, they're real. We're on the page that they're real. It's not like the government's denying it and going, ah, they're just a bunch of tinfoil hat-wearing crackpots yelling about aliens. I mean, look at the guy. He lives in a camper out in the middle of the woods with a makeshift satellite dish that he hacks into public access radio to scream about Martians turning the frogs gay. But if it's official, if they're aliens, well, now I'm kind of having to look at it through more of less of the fascination of like, wow. What if there really is another civilization out there? Wow, how great would it be to find out that, you know, there really are aliens out there. I'd rather find Sasquatch. That would be much better. To fi finally find a little culture of Sasquatches. What's the worst that's going to happen there? W Sasquatch becomes the S word and we have to call him something really like long and condescending and vaguely racist like people of big feet or some shit. Anyway, but yes, if we're going with the assumption that they're real, and it's not just, you know, agreeing with a crackpot, <clears throat> then, uh, then maybe it's time to start addressing some real concerns about our visitor friends from outer space. Like, one, if they're this great enlightened being that is here to cure our diseases and give us great technology and save us from global warming or whatever, why the fuck haven't they already done it? And you can say, well, I mean, they gave us all the technology that we're using now. Well, I'm seeing the shit they can do. They appear to be holding back on us. So, um, I'm going to have to go with a no-go with that. And just go ahead and assume, give mankind the credit for inventing all of the shit we're using now. Considering it is very primitive in comparison to uh, to what our dreamers from outer space uh, are using. So, let's just go ahead and also stop deifying these fucking things. They're animals with better equipment. That actually makes them more legitimately dangerous than uh, the Messiah. 
Now, <clears throat> that said, I'm running very low on good possibilities that are going to come from aliens, because the more you start really sitting down and troubleshooting it, my only favorite alien scenario really is that he just lands in my backyard and is cool and wants to hang out. Oh, holy shit, is an alien. Do you have any plutonium? No, I don't. Well, do you have a beer? I have a Heineken. Heineken? Fuck that shit! Paps Blue Ribbon! And then we hang out, and, you know, I learn things from him, he learns things from me, he enjoys smoking weed and watching old shitty horror movies, just like I do, and we have fun adventures where I put him in a trench coat and a hat, and I try to sneak him into public places and hope nobody realizes that he's purple and has three eyes. And then we run from government agents until we finally get you that plutonium to get you back to Melmec. That's, that's a good one. That's the only good one. Because the other ones I just don't see fucking happening where they're good. Because when you really think about it, the only conceivable scenario where aliens are good, it's always that story. They come down, they hang out with us, and they're really awesome, and then the big bad government comes to get them, and then we have to, you know, whisk them away on, we, we have to, you know, go on a high-speed chase from the government on our bicycles to get him back to his spaceship, because people just don't understand, man. Yeah, it's a nice scenario where we're the bad guy, but um, there's about an infinite number of possibilities for how these things are going to be not good news. I don't think they're our friends. Uh, we better hope they just here to mine some, some of our ocean water or whatever the hell it is they're, uh, they're here doing. So let, 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 let's, let's chew through a few possibilities. Let's start with the one that I'm kind of settling on for right now. Until I see something a little more substantial other than uh, something that looks like it could have been made on Adobe After Effects, and by that I'm talking about the fucking radar footage of a white triangle, or these, these weird, the, those weird circulating lights that fly around and then just kind of scatter and disappear. Uh, even if those are real. Uh, aliens? Are they aliens, or is that something akin to, like, an Aurora Borealis? Some kind of odd weather, uh what do you call it, atmospheric discharge or phenomenon, we just don't see often enough to really figure out what it is. That does not look like vehicles to me. But, <clears throat> and as far as this thing that flies into the water, splits into two, I don't know what the fuck that is. But at the same time, it is possible, because they have these videos all the time of... You, where you can take Jim Carrey's face and stick it over Jack Nicholson's in The Shining, and you can barely tell the difference. That's not some technological whiz kid or government operative. That is a dipshit that has way too much time on his hands, and this is the best he can do with that skill. I, I'm, I'm supposed to believe this. Here's alien footage I'll believe. is when there is a big crowd of people standing around an unidentifiable vehicle that is sitting on the ground, and there's a guy going, What is that, cuh? What is that, cuz? That look like a spaceship, cuz. What is that, cuz? Oh, that, what, what is that, cuz? Look at that silver, cuz. What is that? What is that, cuz? Oh, my God, look at that motherfucker. He's green, cuz. Look Bug that little motherfucker. Look, look, cuz. Look, cuz. That's alien, cuz. That's alien, cuz. telling you, that's alien. That's alien, cuz. He got tentacles, cuz. Like, that, then I'll, I'll believe you. I'll believe that. But, and there's more people, and there's different angles of people also looking at it going, what the hell is that? And I wish this guy would quit screaming "cuh" every two seconds. Then I'll I, I feel like I would believe that a little more because that would look like authentic un uh, footage you can't tamper with. This I you just w w what is this? What is this shit? I'm not. Please, something that doesn't look fakeable. Maybe you should have released this before. Uh, the era of flawless special effects took over. But see, this is another thing. Uh, this is incredibly fakeable, as I'm pointing out. 
But why tell us now? Like, what is... I don't really get what the... I mean, sure, uh, Trump declassified the files uh, in the Freedom of Information Act or whatever because the Prime Minister of Britain had went ahead and just announced that, yes, UFOs definitely exist. So he had to do that. And then, given another administration who has 180 days to edit... And, uh, and might I add, a very untrustworthy administration, just through and through. This is the, the there by themselves are kind of scary for reasons I'm not going to get into. I want to stay on the aliens for right now. But so now they're coming out, and Obama's pretending that, like, yes, we've decided to go ahead and tell you about the aliens. And it's like, nah, dude, you just the the the. Files were declassified. Stop swooping in and trying to take credit for something the guy you hate before. That's the other thing. They aggressively hate this president. Not fake hate like they did with George W. Bush, but I mean they hate hate this fucking guy. So, if there is anything in there they don't want us to see related to the aliens and information about such, they've had 180 days to comb through it, re redact whatever they want edit, burn files. The only way, if you declassified them and said they're out, now. Like, put them out the same fucking day you declassify them. It's like, now we're going to put them out. Now. Why does it take any, what, what, is, what is the 180 days? What are you doing? And this is getting made of my other point here. Because <clears throat> I'm considering this right now top possibility with this alien shit. Uh, very scary one, but I, actually I prefer it to the other alternatives, believe it or not. Uh, they're not fucking real. The aliens don't actually exist. Alright? Maybe the strange aerial phenomenon do. Maybe these crafts do, but they made them in a base that we are like Area 51, except not, you know, a cultural hit like that we all know about. Not something the tabloids have been exploring... Doing this on an island we're, not, we're unaware of, restricted, and they're flying them over here. Now, to further play long game in controlling a populace and a government that is, seems to be becoming more and more exceedingly fascist as time goes on, and... What use could they possibly have for now pretending to tell us the truth about these aliens? Could it be to push whatever policies they want? Forget your political affiliations for a second, and just imagine it's the thing that really gets you, whatever it is. Whether it's pushing the Green New Deal or... Uh, Whatever the hell the other side is terrified of. White supremacy, whatever. Just pretend they want to kill all the Muslims. Okay, yeah. Whatever thing they're pushing that's going to be so uh, ridiculous that we would never accept otherwise unless we were trying to please a, uh, <clears throat> uh, a certain somebody that is flying around monitoring us, uh, the aliens would prefer if we do this. The aliens want us to do this. It's the, the, the aliens are willing to cooperate with us, but only if citizens turn in their guns. The Green New Deal is a demand being made by the aliens, and we need to obey them. See, so once again, uh, let's not worship these fucking things. Let's keep it in perspective. They're living life forms who came from a place, and they obey the same laws of nature as things that live on this planet do. Because that's just... It, it, there, there's not a, a planet full of uh, giant assholes that fart. You know, like, uh, this isn't Rick and Morty. Whatever these things are, they're intelligent enough to build spacecrafts and travel through space. Okay? That, that's established already by the fact that they're here and flying around in our airspace. But... They still, wherever they're from, they still have to live. They have to eat, they have to consume, they have to reproduce, and they have to, most importantly, take up fucking space. All of which 
are competitive things in the, the, the natural competition of being alive. So they're going to be as warlike, bloodthirsty, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, colonizing as uh, as we are. I'm, I'm so sick of this mankind are savages and these things are going to be the way or something. No, fuck them. They really have no business here. It's not their goddamn planet. They've been flying around here trespassing for the last 60 years that we know about without our consent. Uh, so not to, you know, put on my Earth First MAGA hat here, but uh, I kind of care more about us than I do the aliens. Uh, uh, call me nuts. I, you know, I, communication, cooperation... Progress, all encouraged, but I, I'm curious to know how far I have fallen on the food chain in terms of my species here. I'm not pretending I myself am hot shit, but as far as the collective animal that is mankind, we're kind of the rulers of this rock. So, you know, where are we at now? The aliens are here, and the government, first off, you've been pretending to not know that these things have been flying around for the last 60 years, so if you are talking to them, why are we supposed to believe you when you say you're not? Should we believe anything, these fucking people? First off, no. And now, we also live in a, a populous uh, society at large that no longer believes in God. This is making them more uncontrollable and crazy. You need something that's going to be able to just, bam, snap people to immediate attention and start obeying. Fucking aliens. The aliens that for some reason only they're going to talk to and will conveniently just want every policy they want pushed to. I think this is something we need to consider instead of getting excited about the possibility of seeing little green men. I say that's the best case scenario just because at least it's not the aliens. I feel like we can at least beat that if it's just the governments. Like some international cabal of guys that are trying to overthrow all of the government simultaneously and run the world through a dare I say it, new world globalist government. I mean, look, let, let's just consider that a possibility because uh, otherwise I don't know why they would have any real incentive to tell us the truth about it. And it definitely ain't out of the goodness of their heart and transparency. Bullshit. I don't believe it. I don't even believe they're human. And this is the other possibility uh, that's likely. This is the worst case scenario, I think. They're getting bold about showing us their spacecrafts flying around because they've already beat us. They've won. They've already infiltrated our governments, subverted our culture, and are ready to start herding us into the, the death camps for slaughter. Or whatever terrible plans they have. Turn us into meatloaf. Test their shampoo on us. Whatever it is. That, to me, would be the worst case scenario in full, is that the aliens have, that they already got us. And it's only getting worse from here. We are about to live under full-scale Nazi fascism. It'll just be, you know, sort of Germans, it'll be aliens. And of course, no matter how many fucking cities they blow up, uh, we're going to have idiots uh, protesting on behalf of them. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. You yeah, kill great people! It's fate that today is the 4th of July. Don't and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Died. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution. But from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live. Russians are welcome here. 
All right, so let's uh, let's play around with some other scenarios. Uh, let's see. There's the I would say second best case scenario as far as it being an intelligent. Yeah, I'm not too like that. That's my thing. How enthused should we be about a creature? I don't know how how awesome it is that these things have vehicles and can drive here. I don't know how excited we should be about that concept. Show up on an asteroid. I would much rather the Mars rover pick up a worm than the thing just rolling up here uh, out of the sky going, What's up, Earth? I, I don't know if I like that. That's, uh... Oh, what, well, when we do it to them? Yes, when we do it to them. So, anyway... But the District 9 scenario, where they show up stranded, and they become second-class citizens, and, you know, all that shit. I say that's second best, because if anybody's going to be oppressing anybody, eh, I'd rather it be us oppressing them than the other way around. So you don't really know what you're in store for when you're talking about being oppressed by another species that doesn't care if you're in pain, doesn't care if you don't have anesthetic, doesn't care about your family because it doesn't relate to it. But anyway, yeah, so I mean, once we break a language barrier, we can always apologize and let down the fence. But there's other things to consider as far as any kind of cohabitation situation goes that I don't think many people think of. Uh, for instance, maybe they're not good for our environment and we're not good for them. Like, maybe smelling a human fart puts one of these things into anaphylactic shock. Like, and same with us. Maybe having their sewage in, running in with ours and emptying into our rivers... It'd be the equivalent of just pouring in lit crude oil. They could shit something so, uh, like, radioactive bat guano that is just so toxic it kills everything it touches. And can't be just dumped around here. Little shit like that, I, I don't know. That's just an example of uh, how things can go. We probably, we might not be able to live together if we wanted to. All right, so let's move on to uh, that's that's the problem I see there. Otherwise, I mean, if that's not the case, and we could break a language barrier, then yeah, fuck it, live here. I don't care. You couldn't be less productive than some of the people that were born here. I couldn't imagine, but. <clears throat> That would suck if they showed up here and they were just poor, useless, and complete fucking assholes. That would be... Actually, you know what? Still, that would be better. Because it's beatable. You could beat that. I. The premise of we need probably should figure out a plan for how to beat these things. Because they're not going to be our friends. They're not good news. I can't think of any scenario where aliens are, in real life, where aliens are going to be good news. But they're in space travel. They're enlightened. And they're going to, they're beyond us. They're not savages. They look down at us and at our wars and just go, what? Beast. No, they're probably looking around going, fucking finish it already. We killed our competition in like, Two and a half hours. What are you doing? 20 years? Blow these fuckers up already. Like that... How do you know they're not looking at it from that perspective? Jesus, look how long it takes them to exterminate a pest. Because like I said, they're natural beings. They obey the laws of nature of whatever planet they live on. And the laws of nature are the strongest, the fittest survive. And there's a good possibility they weren't the only intelligent species on that planet. In which case, they had to have killed the other one. And more than likely killed the other one. 
for efficiency's sake. Because they want to travel the stars. Because enlightened beings don't feel the need to build spaceships and conquer worlds. They sit around and meditate and pretend that they're doing nothing is somehow better than what productive people who accomplish shit do. That's what an enlightened being does. It regurgitates therapy nonsense while it lives off of your fucking resources. No, these things are productive. That means they destroy shit. They kill shit and they conquer shit. Well, why haven't they done that yet? Well, like I said, they probably already have. Very possible. Or they're just dicking around until the rest of the fleet show up. It does, it does make me lend a lot more credence to uh, the David Eichmann lizard people theory. Because reptilian really is the perfect analogy for the politicians that govern our nations. Collectively nations. All of them. I don't think they're fucking people half the time. You listen to them talking to me, some of the media people and the Dr. Fauci's. It just. That or you are just so removed from the regular populace due to your status as a politician, world leader, important public figure that you just don't know anything about the public anymore. But yeah, reptilian seems to be the perfect analogy because we seem very expendable to these people. And they're not accountable for anything. They seem to have zero self-awareness or sense of irony, which I would also associate with an alien or a reptile. Still, I really just use it as an analogy, or not an analogy, but a, uh, a slur. Yeah, that's it. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. All right, what's another one? The uh, <clears throat> people from the future scenario. I kind of like this one, except I have a couple of problems with it. One, I don't believe in time travel. At least not the going backwards part. I just don't see how it's physically possible. The only way I can conceive of that even... Because what are the physical mechanisms to move time backwards? <clears throat> and how do you only go back in time? If you're going to move time backwards, how do you do it without moving all of time backwards? And you have to move all of it, not rather just how, how do I cut through, go backwards in time to experience it. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I just, I have a hard time buying into that concept. But, uh, <clears throat> they do say that we are moving uh, the universe as we know it. All matter floating around in the universe is observably moving in one direction towards a thing they call the great attractor. Now, if the great attractor is the movement towards this great attractor is the flow of time, then theoretically, and I'm saying theoretically, as if I'm a scientist, I'm not, uh, but just in my own uh, theorizing of it, is that if you were to go against the current of the great attractor far enough, you would cross another Milky Way. Another version of our galaxy that's a hundred years old and is left there like a kind of like a photocopied residue. The way that <clears throat> kind of the way that you know how like stars are like suns and are burned out like hundreds of years ago, but the light or thousands of years ago or whatever. But the light is just now reaching Earth, and that's why we can see it. And that it would be sort of a principle similar to that. That these copies of the, this is residue of Earth left a thousand years ago, and this is Earth left a hundred years. This the further back you go, the further uh, backwards you go into the solar system. That would be the only way I could conceive of being able to actually travel backwards in time without moving all of time backwards at once. But okay, let's just pretend that you can travel time. Do we want people traveling through time and, and monkeying with the past? Do we really want that? How much do we trust people, people from the future, that have only gotten smarter in terms of trivia? I mean, if it wasn't for the other people, the other primates that are so b beneath this generation of fucking enlightened geniuses that live now, uh, didn't build everything for us, we wouldn't know the shit we know now. So... 
I, I can't imagine that people in the... We have amazing toys now in a population that is extremely fucking stupid in so many ways. So I don't imagine that people in the future are going to be any different. They're just going to be able to move time. And are stupid enough to keep coming back here over and over and over and over again. And getting caught by our government and experimented on. And leaving behind uh, technology, mystery, conspiracy theories and fear and all sorts of other shit. But going back in time and tampering with it, isn't there a whole, I don't know, cautionary tale we've been telling for since we've invented books or come up with this concept of going back in time that if you go back in time <clears throat> and start changing shit, that it creates a ripple? That could also explain why we have half of the population evenly divided up and living in what appear to be two separate realities. Because we we're talking about people that can't even look at obvious footage that was filmed of an event and agree that that event happened. So, without concocting a shitload of ridiculous theories and explanations as to why the very obvious thing happening on the fucking camera is not actually happening. But, either way, could it be that they really are just... Seeing it, maybe it doesn't actually change change. Maybe only certain people tune in to the actual shift. And maybe that's why there are people who think they're dogs or believe the earth is flat. Other than just being stupid. Once again, this is just really spitballing a theory of time travel out of my asshole because I do not fucking believe you can do it. I don't believe it's possible. I think the closest thing to time travel is recording. That's it. Movies where you get that are 100 years old where you can pop them in and go, man, that's what life looked like 100 years ago. This is how people saw themselves 100 years ago. This is what that thing, this is what a telephone looked like back then. Like, that's trapping the past. That's not necessarily, yeah, that's trapping the past. That's not necessarily going back and living it. So, but, if these um, ripples in time <clears throat> aren't so much that, <clears throat> not the, okay, let's not even say it's a ripple, let's just say it created another string of time where the events are different, but they still overlap each other, and like, all right, Let's just say, let's just use gender identity crisis as an example of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, Monica and Chandler uh, fuck each other in timeline A, and then Phoebe and Joey are fucking each other in timeline A. And in timeline A, Monica and Chandler begat Ross, Phoebe and Joey begat Rachel, and... That's how it's supposed to be. That's what it was in the original timeline. But then a spaceship comes back, crashes, and the timeline alters, albeit slightly. But you've created another string of time running simultaneously through a stream of time that is supposed to be, you know, a string of time. Uh, now, uh, things change. Chandler gets hit by a bus. Phoebe becomes a lesbian. Monica fucks Joey. And what should have been in the timeline that was supposed to be happening was it was supposed to be a Ross and a Rachel. But the timeline is altered, and Ross and Rachel, who are supposed to both exist in a timeline that has already been predetermined and now mon has already lived out once and now being monkeyed with, are now living as one person double exposed over each other. Which, and once again... Time travel is bullshit. I'm only making sense of this bullshit theory to explore the possibility that these people are coming back in the future. And also, what did they do in the future that has created the necessity for time travel? Because necessity, as they say, is the mother of all invention. They must have needed time travel. Even if it's just to come back here and mine water. They must have fucked up really fucking bad. A uh, thousand years into the future, if they're needing to come back here. 
to deal with us, to, to play around with us primates, right? Once again, we can deduce that even though these things can bend time, they're probably not that goddamn bright and are just as destructive as we are now because they're still us and they're, pe cause they're, they're people from the future. They're still people that are now fucking with time. I don't know if that's really good. I, I'm just saying. That also could explain why they seem to refuse to interact with us at all. Because it screws up the timeline. So every time we get caught, we get seen on camera, or they get seen on camera or whatever, it screws up the, the timeline? Is that, maybe, does it work like that? I don't know. But then again, time travel's bullshit. But I'm just going through that possibility because that seems to be a popular theory with the aliens. Okay, what was another one? Okay, this one's mine. Mine alone. And I know this one's going to sound fucking weird because I'm already 40 minutes or so into this podcast. And, uh... Alright. I think, and this is once again based on my own personal beliefs of how the system of the existence in the universe works, is that Things are going from smaller to larger, and, I mean, it's obvious, right? The, down to the, the smallest atoms, you look at them, what are they? They're spheres. They're little spheres piled on top of little spheres, or more spheres that, I mean, what is matter? It, it, it's tiny cells piling together to make a larger object. And that pattern follows all the way from germs, all the way up to you know, life. I mean, when you look at a human being, two human beings, you're like your own individual planets. You're housing life. Yeah, sure, it's all the same life, but your your body is housing life. Little parasites, little creatures, little bugs, your cells, the your blood cells, and they can't conceive of you at all. Do they know they're powering you when they're traveling, carrying oxygen, to your brain, do they know why, does your blood cells understand why it's doing it? And what it's doing it for, or is it just doing it because that's what it does? And I think that same principle could apply to the same, because what is up the, in outer space after we get off of our little ball, what is it? It's a bunch of little spheres, right? And if you keep backing out far enough, it turns into a big coagulated goo more or less. So, I think God, as it says in the Bible, you can't know me. And I think this is why. Because we live inside of it. I think we have an inherent knowledge, belief, or instinct to serve it, or to try to know it, or to understand of it, to want to be aware of it. Because we carry out a function that's important to it, possibly. Or planets do. Planets and the solar systems and the asteroids. Now, if my theory is correct and we are just the atoms of a larger, unknowable and inconceivable being, then these probes and little vehicles that keep sporadically popping in and out now just imagine if your cells could perceive, saw things in the same dimension, dimensional way that you do. And the little creatures living in your asshole suddenly see that little camera that comes through whenever you get a colonoscopy and it's got a light on it and it's traveling through in an unnatural way to an asshole germ. It's going to go, what the fuck is that? What, what is that? It'll be the world event they talk about uh, all until, you know, the 24 hours that they live or whatever's up. But, yeah, that's what it would be. A goddamn spaceship. Uh, this invasive thing. Oh, we've inserted a dye into your blood so we can x-ray you and, you know, map out your circulatory system. You don't think things like that happen and completely... Whatever perception that a single-celled organism has, you don't think that fucks with it? Like... What the hell is this? Why is this hat? What, what is that? What is this chemical? What, what is... You know, when you introduce new things, it's alien. It's foreign to your body. 
if you cough, germs fly out of you into a seemingly zero gravity environment until it can hopefully land on another planet, which in this case would be another person. So, this is also kind of a scary notion too, because we might exist, but we probably shouldn't to whatever this creature is, right? This thing's in its doctor's office going, Doc, I'm feeling a little weird right here. Well, your x-ray shows you got life growing on this planet right here, but it's not enough to worry about. We'll send, we've sent a biopsy in. Right now, you, you just got dinosaurs and trees. It's nothing to worry. It's a little water. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. But we're, we need to keep an eye on the situation. Make sure it's not spreading to any of your other planets. If so, going to have to consider removing it. But right now, it looks benign. It's just lizards and shit. Alright, we, we've upgraded to monkeys, Gornak. We, we may have a problem. They're inventing technology. Once again, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. You still got to... There's still plenty of time... They've only put a rover on this one over here. They've went through this one once, but hey, so far, still a little weak. Still, you're still stage one of life on your planet, so it's nothing to worry about. Cheerful thought, isn't it? That's what I love about my belief system: is that it doesn't involve my ego. I don't even exist to the God that, uh, of my, I don't know him. I don't know him. And if the Bible has any credence whatsoever, he's told me that. I can't know him. I can't know him because I'm probably a cancer growing on one of his planets that he needs for his survive him and whatever, you know. So, that's another possibility. Um, yeah, well, like I said, we can do this all fucking day, but I see about a... There's always more ways for things to go wrong than right. And uh, So, you know, when I pull out my Doctor Strange time stone and start looking into the futures of what this means with aliens and all of the possibilities, infinite possibilities of how this could end... Yeah, I see more bad ones than good ones. I I might be surprised. Once again, I'm I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, but I think maybe I feel like no one has considered the government psyop possibility of replacing God with aliens. Right now, that's where I'm sitting. Cuz I want to believe in aliens as much as I don't want to believe in aliens. I, I, w I would much rather the rover have found a worm on Mars so we can go, yeah, we found a Martian! And it eats sand. It's a slug. Congratulations. Awesome. Let's bring it back here, dissect it. Ah, oh, shit, it was the last one. Fuck. It was the first creature to pro crawl out of the primordial ooze of Mars and we've destroyed it. Damn us! You maniacs! You cut him up! Uh, alright, so anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts on aliens right now. As I'm considering possibilities, and like I said, there's an infinite number. Uh, I, the only two of them are good, and they're the cheesy movie scenarios of uh, the alien's my buddy, and we have to save him from the government, and... An alien landed, followed by a bad alien, but the good alien saved us from the bad alien, so aliens are, eh, neutral. As long as we got this good alien, we'll be safe from bad aliens. As long as this Volkswagen here can still turn into a giant robot and kick ass, we'll be good. Because there's good aliens. We're fucked, but at least we have this one good alien. Yeah, I'm not really going with that one. I, I'm thinking more in terms of nature, if we're talking about biological entities that are exploring new avenues for a place to live or whatever the hell they're doing here. I don't think there are, there are friends. 
I think we should maybe be a little more cautious about this notion and not stand directly under the laser beam with a an apple pie and a welcome sign. Just doesn't strike me as a good idea. It's still our fucking planet. And that's the other thing. Maybe it isn't our planet. Maybe these guys purchased the planet from some other motherfuckers we have no idea who they are in a place we've never heard of and they're just going to come here and start doing whatever they're doing because they have a deed that states ownership and our agreement is not a factor yeah you're not really we're planning on killing you so just a heads up and no, it's ours. See, that's our, our name on the deed there. We bought it from the Raptabulans on the other side of the galaxy. Yeah, I know you don't know who they are because you're a fucking monkey and you're uh, terribly beneath us. Um, what we're going to do, actually, we're going to kill most of you, but we're, we're going to keep you around just to see how much shit you can live through. We, we're interested to know how long you can survive without your skin. We tried it once with that Hitler guy, but apparently if we just throw one of you, we kind of figured out that you can't outnumber us and kill us. So, uh, but yeah, uh, what does this acid do when we throw it in your eyes? Pfft. My eyes, it hurts! Yeah, I don't care it hurts. You're not one of us, so fuck you. Uh, I think they're going to have the same view of us as we do of rabbits, roaches. The anthill theory I don't consider very comforting. So we're not interesting to them. We're like ants to them. Uh, yeah. What do we do to ants? Sometimes we just stomp on them for fun. Stomp on their little hill just to watch them get pissed off. Dump oil in it. Dump water in it. Run lawnmowers over it. We're not really concerned about the amount of time and effort it took for them to stack all that dirt, are, are we? Why would the aliens feel any fucking different about us? It only stands to reason they wouldn't. We reserve the 1% chance. But first off, the odds that they're going to be our friends are even smaller than the odds that other life forms on the other sides of the universe can actually get here. With a vehicle. Alright, anyway. I'm done. I'll be back dissecting movie reviews so no one can watch them. Uh, later on, I'm working on stuff. So, adios.